Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a tambour. Well, I know um, as far as making tambours go for say roll top desks and that sort of thing, um, there is a traditional way to do it with of course canvas and adhesives and slats and strips and you can find all kinds of videos like that on the internet. Um, but I want to talk about a different way to make them today and it involves a router bit set like this. Um, I picked up one of these, this is from uh, Amana Tools, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, but uh, anyway, what it is, it's a router bit set that allows you to make tambours without the canvas. Um, so you don't have the problem of over the years of that adhesive on the slats failing, etc, etc. Um, of course the wood could fail, but hey, that's, a, that's another issue. Um, so what I'm going to do on today's show is I'm going to go through this uh, kit and I'm going to uh, show you and demonstrate how to use them to make a tambour. And it's not just a useless tambour, it will be a lead-in to next week's show um, when I will be making a bread box. So this will also be a reference video for a future build that hopefully will be starting sometime in the early summer. But for now, Let's get started with having a look at what you get in one of these boxes. Well, I ordered this uh, set and I have to say um, it was rather expensive. I was uh, a little taken back by the price. So I hope that it uh, lives up to its expectations. But what you get inside is you get a, a DVD. Um, it's the exact same thing that you can find online, so anyway, don't need a DVD out here. And then, of course, you have uh, some instructionals and uh, some more pamphlets, some more instructionals, and uh, you get a little handle for your first tambour that you make. And then you have the meat and potatoes of the whole thing, which is the bits. And the kit comes with three drill, or sorry, three router bits of which to shape your tambours with. And uh, the purpose of today's show is to show you how to use these bits. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to mill um, some stock. And that stock is going to be a uh, half inch thick. stock is milled down to half inch thick and this particular set of bits works with specific dimensions. So what we have to do in order to work with the limitations of the uh, router bits is we need to rip some of that half inch stock into pieces that is 1 and 15 sixteenths of an inch wide. Now that you've got your stock all ready to go um, with half inch thick and one and fifteen sixteenths of an inch wide, um, you want to consider the length. And the length, of course, will be dependent on what project you're doing. If you're doing a large tambour, you know, you, you have to make the adjustments to be appropriate for your project. Um, now it's time to head to the router table. And what we're going to do is we're going to install this bit right here. And um, <clears throat> I guess there seems to be a lot of trial and error with these um, bits. There's no specific 
setup listed uh, in the entire set. Um, they give you suggestions. So let's head over to the router table and I'll give you my suggestions. They're suggesting here with this uh, set that you take the um, routing of the project in passes. And I, I agree with that. It's less strain on the bit. It's less strain on the router. It's, uh, it produces a much cleaner cut as opposed to tearing out all that material. If you take two passes at it, you're, you're gonna get a cleaner cut. So for the height, I don't know how well you can see this. I'll just bring the bit up. We've got this one cutter edge right here. And we just want to get that cutter edge to just barely kiss the bottom of the stock. So for that, I'm just going to bring in a straight edge here and I'm going to raise the bit until it just touches it. Just like that. Little lower. I shouldn't be hitting it. There we go. So it just kisses it, just like that. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to double check it once I can uh, get in there when the camera's not in my way. And as far as the setup of your fence goes, for the first pass, we want to have it so that this center section right here is just going to barely touch the stock. So we're going to rotate this to the front and we're going to bring our fence up so that it just touches the stock. Just like that. And then tighten down your fence. Now this will be the setup for the first pass of our stock. So for a routing operation like this where there's quite a bit of material being removed we're going to want to uh, use push sticks for starters and feather boards to hold this tight to the fence. It's just, it's, it's important that we get a good clean route and now that we have the bit and the fence set up, we can do our first pass. Well, in my opinion, that was too much material to remove. Um, so I've backed this off a bit to take less material. And I think that setup that we did with the um, inside cutter just kissing the edge of the material, I think that's better suited for the final pass. So let's try it again with uh, a little lighter pass with the router bit, but the, uh, the height will still remain the same. Well, even after that second pass, um, I would suggest even taking less on that first one. So let's give it a try and see how we do. Hopefully you're noticing that I'm putting it through like this and then we're rotating it end to end and now we're going to rotate it top to bottom and then again end to end so that we're getting this profile on four different edges. Um, I'll try to explain that a little better once I finish this next test pass. Definitely uh, much better 
in my opinion, a much lighter pass, was a lot less strain on the router. The top one here was our first passes, and I think this is more of the final product that we want, and this bottom one is our first pass. So now that I've got that uh, little kink taken out of it, I'm gonna run the rest of my stock through and uh, flipping it end to end and back to front, and uh, I'll film one routing just to show you the uh, method of, of how uh, it's, it's going to happen for each piece. Now that we have all of the first passes done, um, we're going to readjust the fence to the way we had it the first time I screwed it up, which is uh, that large area down in there, that, that deepest uh, section of the router bit, just so that it kisses the edge of the fence here, and uh, that will make it for our final pass on the, uh, on the tambour pieces for this particular bit anyway. And with that adjustment made, we'll just uh, run all the pieces through four times per piece again, flipping end to end and side to side. done it right at this point in time, you should have a profile that looks like this. Um, you'll see the two small balls there in the middle that'll fit together like a puzzle piece with that flat section right between them. This is actually two slats of the tambour. This uh, particular bit set utilizes a wider stock, the 1 and 15 sixteenths, um, to make two tambour slats at the same time. Uh, I like that idea. It gives you uh, a lot more material to grip with, uh, a lot uh, more distance away from that turning bit. Um, even though you should be using push sticks anyway, you never know when something's going to slip. And if you just give yourself that little extra breathing room, get further away from the bit, it could save you disaster. Um, now that we've got that done, it's time to set up this bit. So let's head to the router table, get this bit installed, and um, we're going to set the height for it so that the bottom lip of it just touches our stock. Well, I've got that little bit installed in the router, 
and I installed it so that this edge that I'm pointing at right here just barely touches the bottom of the stock. Um, I took a measurement of the height of the bit at that point and I got 11 30 seconds of an inch. So that would be the height that I put it uh, whether or not it's right, we're going to find out. But let's hope it is and say that we're going to put the bit height at 11.30 seconds. Now, I need to cut a kerf in this piece of stock. It's going to be a saw kerf with the table saw, and that is just to ease the strain on that bit. So I've set the height of my table saw blade for five sixteenths of an inch and I'm going to rip uh, a kerf right down the middle and uh, that will go a long way to helping me uh, or, or helping the bit not strain and burn the wood and that sort of thing. So I'm going to rip those uh, kerfs and then I'm going to come back and show you what I've got. Well you can see the kerf that I've ripped here and um, like I said, it's a little shy of what the height of the router bit is, but it is dead center with 3 sixteenths of an inch on either side of that kerf. So now that we have that done, we're going to run our final router pass for these slats um, with that little bit that we installed in the last step. Now for setting our fence alignment for this, all we have to do is line up the center of our bit with our kerf. And uh, once we get it lined up, tighten it down, and uh, we can set our feather boards to hold it tight to the fence and run these pieces through this, uh, this process. got that routing process should look like this and now that you've got that done that flat spot between the two little beads in the middle it's now time to set your table saw fence to rip right down the middle of that spot to separate um, the two slats for your tambour so let's cut them apart Well, the final step in all of this is to give the inside of the, sometimes we're getting a little bit of burring in here, clean it up, light sanding, you don't want to take away the shape, but from there you just slide these tambour slats together. The ball that you've created slides really nicely into that socket that you just finished routing. Um, and it really makes for a nice joint, very professional, slides together easily. Now I haven't sanded these, but I will. I'm only just sliding them together for the purpose of this video. But slide them all together, and when you're done, you can see how nicely that flexes. You have yourself a tambour and I mean this thing is uh, is pretty spectacular so I'm just going to keep sliding these together and see what we end up with um, with the entire project but all in all I think this was pretty much 
a success um, as far as making a tambour goes. I don't know what you guys think, but I think this was an ex a uh, successful day. And there you have it. Making a tambour with the Amana uh, router bit set for uh, making tambours. I, I like it. I, um, I said it, it was pricey, but I was looking for an alternative to the traditional method, and I think I found it with this bit. Um, if this sort of thing interests you, uh, well, you're welcome for the measurements on the bit height uh, for the socket, because there are no such measurements in any of the directions that come with this kit. And I tell you, I would, I would have preferred to have a little more explicit instructions on how to use it. Um, you can get quite a tight radius with them. I think uh, the minimum radius is three and a half inches diameter. Now that's pretty tight. And I think for my next set that I make, I will probably keep the fence a little further away on that first routing process, uh, taking not so deep of a bite just to make the sockets a little tighter than what they are right now. But that's live and learn. Um, that's no big deal. Chances are I will be making a setup block for these. Um, find the setup that I like the best and the way that fits the most and make a setup block so that I can just instantly set the height of that blade and set the uh, fence distance right away with no problems. If this is something that interests you guys, you may want to uh, take test passes, make test pieces, take notes on your setup as I will be doing in the future. Um, you know, it's, it, it never hurts and you can save a lot of stock if you just take the time to do a little extra setup and a little extra testing. Well guys, that's it for this week's show. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I know I've had a lot of fun playing with this router bit set and um, I'm, I'm glad I bought it. I don't regret the, uh, I don't regret the purchase, not one bit, but We'll see how it goes as we see more projects coming down uh, the pipe for this particular program. As I said earlier, I'm hoping that uh, we will be venturing into making a bread box next week. Um, that being said, guys, I want to thank you for joining me again this week. And I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video. Just one more thing, um, for those of you who are wondering, hey, there was three bits in that set, what about the third router bit? It's a round over, and uh, for your very last slat where your handles would go, it's a little wider, you would just route the socket in that set, and the round over that they provide with the, uh, the set rounds off the bottom of that nicely to match all the rest of the round overs. So, there you go. Sorry about that. Forgot to mention the third one. I'll see you next week.